This painting is entitled Titania and Bottom, representing a scene from Shakespeare's famous play A Midsummer Night's Dream. It was painted between 1848 and 1851 by Edwin Landseer, a British artist best known for his paintings of animals. Now if you are not familiar with A Midsummer Night's Dream, Titania is the queen of the fairies and she has just fallen in love with Nick Bottom, a weaver. It's one of several funny love episodes in this play and at the center of a lot of these events is a mischievous fairy named Puck. The Scottish artist Joseph Noel Patton actually captured him brilliantly in this painting Puck and Fairies from 1850. Puck has magical powers, likes to have fun and to help some other characters in this play. One of his pranks was to change the head of Nick Bottom into the head of a donkey. Another thing that he did was to create a magical concoction that when applied to someone's eyelids during their sleep, that person will fall in love with the first living being they see upon waking up. And that explains why the beautiful queen of the fairies Titania is smitten by the not so charming weaver with a donkey head. Also captured here in a drawing from 1905 by Charles Buchel. And this is an engraving based on a painter by Henry Fuseli, which shows the same scene with Queen Titania, Nick Bottom with the donkey hat and a bunch of fairies. A Midsummer Night's Dream is one of Shakespeare's most famous plays, written around 1595. It consists of five different acts and the scene we saw here takes place in the first scene of Act 3. It has inspired many artists to depict this fairy tale like story on the canvas. And the beauty is that there is no right or wrong way to depict the characters in this story. Compare for example the way that Patton portrayed the fairy Puck with the way Henry Fuseli depicted him a few decades earlier. Both show the mischief in his eyes in completely different ways, but both are inspired by the same source, which is Shakespeare. A Midsummer Night's Dream contains various parallel and interwoven plotlines, all connected through an upcoming wedding of Theseus and Hippolyta. I will not go through every plot, but will focus on a couple of plots that have particularly inspired some painters. So we saw already one work by Joseph Noel Patton, but he made a couple of others about the Midsummer Night's Dream. Perhaps the most spectacular is this one. The Quarrel of Oberon and Titania. Once again the woman on the left is Titania, the queen of the fairies with her husband Oberon, the king of the fairies next to her. They are involved in a serious argument involving an Indian changeling we see here. And this is described in the first scene of Act 2. Oberon wants to have the changeling to use as his knight, but Titania doesn't want to give the boy to her husband as the boy's mother was a worshipper of Titania. After the argument, Oberon will reach out to Puck the fairy to make the laugh concoction that will later lead to a lot of funny and confusing scenes. But maybe more impressive than telling the story of Oberon and Titania, this painting creates the setting in which a Midsummer Night's Dream takes place, which is the magical forest just out of Athens in Greece. The enchanting forest is filled with a total of 165 fairies and it's pretty spectacular to look at all the details in this painting. You can imagine that when this painting was first exhibited in 1850, it made quite an impression. And it was immediately chosen as the painting of the season by the Royal Scottish Academy. A few years earlier, a 25 year old Patton had actually painted another scene of Oberon and Titania. But this time it was the reconciliation which is described in the fourth act of the play. So far, the focus has been on the king and queen of the fairies and the mischievous fairy Puck. 
But there are a bunch of other storylines in A Midsummer Night's Dream as well. Like the story of Hermia and Lysander, captured here in 1870 by John Simmons. Their storyline is one of love and confusion. They do love each other, but after the fairy Puck applies his love concoction to the wrong people, there is all sorts of confusion and Lysander will actually fall in love with Hermia's best friend Helena. Anyway, you either know the story already, or I can recommend you to read it, it's a real classic. The beauty of this painting is actually in the details as you can see with all the little fairies being present. A similar idea was used by Edward Robert Hughes in 1908 when painting this scene of Hermia and the fairies in the forest. Each of them captured the magic of Shakespeare's story in their own unique way and I'm curious to hear which of the paintings shown so far is your favorite. Or maybe there is another painting related to A Midsummer Night's Dream not shown here that comes to mind. Like this version from 1897 of Titania and Bottom by Paul Jean Gervais or the interpretation of William Blake. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little overview of some wonderful works related to Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe buttons and don't forget to leave a comment with your thoughts if you have any. I always enjoy reading them. Thanks for watching.